Gentle raindrops danced upon the glistening streets as a melody of laughter and music filled the air. It was a moment frozen in time, the very first encounter with the 1952 cinematic masterpiece, Singin' in the Rain. Do you remember that feeling? The anticipation that tingled in the depths of your chest, the excitement that bubbled up as the opening credits rolled. Perhaps you found yourself caught in a whirlwind of nostalgia, or maybe it was a recent rendezvous with this black and white gem that left an indelible mark on your cinematic soul. Picture yourself transported to a world where umbrellas twirl like dervishes, where lampposts become dance partners, and rain transforms into a rhythm that only the heart truly comprehends. The magic of Gene Kelly's exuberant dance under the rain the charm of Debbie Reynolds' innocence, and the timeless humor that Donald O'Connor brought to the screen. These are the threads that wove themselves into the tapestry of your memory, as unforgettable as the scent of rain on a summer afternoon. The iconic scene where Kelly's jubilant voice mingles with the rain's pitter-patter, the sheer joy that emanates from the trio as they harmonize in Good Morning, a dance that defies gravity and logic and make him laugh. These moments, like a collection of precious jewels, are the ones that illuminate your recollections of that very first rendezvous with Singin' in the Rain. And now, as the stage is set for a deeper dive into the enchanting world of this classic, let us unveil the curtain on a trove of random facts that will undoubtedly deepen your connection to the magic behind the scenes. Prepare to be amazed by stories of unexpected improvisations, the challenges of shooting during a heat wave, and the intriguing dynamics that shaped the film's creation. So, let us embark on this journey together, peering behind the silver screen to uncover the secrets and anecdotes that give Singin' in the Rain its timeless allure. A symphony of rain, laughter, and love awaits, inviting you to relive the wonder and rediscover the nuances that make this film an eternal treasure. And remember, in the end, it's the stories that make the movies, and the movies that make our stories. It's that delicate dance between real and reality that forever intertwines them, ensuring that Singin' in the Rain isn't just a film, but a cherished memory etched in the annals of your personal history. In the classic 1952 film Singin' in the Rain, a mesmerizing dance between history and cinema unfolds, with a lesser-known subplot that mirrors the backstage tales of Hollywood's golden age. While Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds shine in the spotlight, the enigmatic character of Phoebe Dinsmore, played by Kathleen Freeman, holds a hidden connection to the era's vocal training luminaries. Freeman's portrayal is subtly modeled after Constance Collier, a vocal coach who graced Hollywood during the late 1920s. Collier's expertise sculpted the voices of Marion Davies and Norma Talmadge, echoing through Freeman's performance, bridging the gap between past and present. However, it's the captivating saga behind the Broadway ballet sequence that unveils the dance of change both on and off screen. Originally set to feature both Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor, fate intervened as O'Connor's prior TV commitment rendered him unavailable. In a pivot that would define cinematic history, Sid Sherry's, adorned with elegance, replaced him. Sherry's, a ballet dancer by trade, embarked on a journey of adaptation. She metamorphosed into a vision evoking Louise Brooks, shedding post-pregnancy weight through rigorous dieting and even mastering the art of dancing in heels. Sherry's collaboration with Kelly, with his jazz-infused dance style, required a harmonious fusion of their expertise, resulting in a balletic symphony that seamlessly united their distinct talents. Singin' in the Rain, a perennial favorite, weaves its magic not just through its on-screen moments, but also through these hidden layers, connecting the dots between Hollywood's epochs. Each tap of the shoe and every note sung reverberate with the echoes of a rich cinematic heritage, where characters and actors alike melded past with present, creating a timeless masterpiece. So as we revisit the iconic rain-soaked lamppost scene or revel in the buoyant energy of Good Morning, let's remember that the echoes of yesteryears resonate through the performer's artistry, captured forever in the celluloid time capsule. Asshole. Asshole. Debbie Reynolds' commute, a determined start for a rising star cast as an ingenue in the 1952 cinematic gem singin' in the rain. Debbie Reynolds faced more than the spotlight's glare. Her dawn began with a pre-dawn trek, 
A mere 19 years old, she navigated her way to the set from her parents' home, her youthful determination eclipsing the hurdles. The clock striking 4 a.m., Reynolds embarked on a journey involving three buses, an odyssey of public transport. A less traveled path to stardom, Reynolds sometimes sought respite by catching a few winks on the very set she illuminated. To avoid the rigors of her early morning commute, the young actress would nestle into makeshift accommodations, surrendering to slumber amid the film's enchanting backdrop. Her commitment and resilience weren't lost on the film's team, nor the audiences who would eventually be captivated by her effervescent performance. Reynolds, a beacon of youthful spirit, transformed the silver screen into a canvas for her dreams, embodying the very essence of the film's optimistic aura. As the credits rolled and the curtain fell, the world was left not only with a timeless masterpiece, but also the story of a starlet who, with unwavering resolve, painted her own path to cinematic glory, glory, glory. In a dazzling display of vocal acrobatics, the 1952 cinematic masterpiece Singin' and the Rain unveils a hidden complexity beneath its tuneful surface. Amid the harmonious cadence of melodies and the graceful dance numbers, a curious narrative intricacy arises. In a looping scene that intertwines irony and artistry, Kathy Selden, portrayed by Debbie Reynolds, lends her voice to Lena Lamont, played by Jean Hagen. Yet, the irony deepens as it is Jean Hagen herself who breathes life into Lena's dialogues, her own voice a stark contrast to the character's shrill tones. A symphony of vocal layers unfolds, Jean dubbing Debbie dubbing Jean. But there's more to this musical riddle. When Debbie's character seemingly lends her voice to Jean's rendition of Would You, the mesmerizing vocals belong to Betty Noyes, a testament to her richer singing resonance. This harmonious enigma is just a single note in the grand composition of Singin' in the Rain, a film that has etched its name into the annals of cinematic greatness. In 2007, the prestigious American Film Institute heralded it as the fifth greatest movie of all time. This distinction underscores the film's enduring impact and its ability to transcend eras, sprinkling its magic over generations. An intriguing note of discord arises from the history of the film's melodies. Arthur Freed's whimsical creation Make Him Laugh dances its way into the storyline, yet its steps bear an uncanny resemblance to Cole Porter's Be a Clown from the producer's earlier work, The Pirate. But unlike the stage where such echoes might raise eyebrows, the celluloid world seems to harbor no accusations of plagiarism, leaving the legacy of both songs untarnished. Singin' in the rain beckons us to immerse ourselves in the echoes of its melodies, the footprints of its dances, and the enigma of its vocal layers. With each viewing, its cadence reverberates, reminding us that beyond the rain-drenched streets and glittering smiles lies a tapestry of narrative layers, as intricate as the melodies that grace its frames. Singin' in the Rain, a cinematic triumph of costumes and profits, the 1952 classic film Singin' in the Rain not only dazzled audiences with its memorable tunes and captivating performances, but also made a significant mark on Hollywood's financial landscape. With a final cost of $2,540,800, the film's budget soared beyond MGM's projections by $665,000. A hefty $157,000 chunk was allocated solely for Walter Plunkett's exquisite costumes, reflecting the studio's commitment to visual splendor. Despite these extravagant expenditures, MGM's gamble paid off handsomely. The movie raked in a staggering $7.7 .7 million profit upon its initial release, underscoring the wisdom of the studio's investment. A lesser-known tidbit about this cinematic gem lies in its iconic title track. Penned by Arthur Freed in 1929, the song would find its perfect home in Singin' in the Rain over two decades later. This merging of creative timelines showcases the enduring power of musical composition and its ability to transcend eras. Delving into the film's intricacies, keen observers will spot a hidden homage within the office of RF, the studio head. Adorning the walls are drawings of MGM's brightest stars, with one particularly close to RF, S. Hart. Marion Davies, a prominent MGM star from 1924 to 1934, takes her place among the luminaries, a subtle nod to the studio's history and the stars who shaped it. Singin' in the Rain, a masterpiece that weathered financial storms and captured the essence of Hollywood's golden era, continues to enchant audiences with its timeless charm.
As the film's legacy endures, its tales of cost overruns, creative crossroads, and historical references remain an integral part of cinematic lore. Gene Kelly's masterful choreography elevates Singin in the Rain in the Annals of Hollywood musicals. Singin in the Rain stands as a true icon, a cinematic gem that has dazzled audiences since its release in 1952. While its toe-tapping numbers and catchy tunes are well known, a behind-the-scenes tale adds a fascinating layer to the film's history, as recounted in supplemental DVD information. The immortal Singin in the Rain sequence, a crescendo of joy in movement, almost met an ironic watery demise. The scene's first take was marred by an unexpected obstacle. Homeowners in the vicinity had just returned from work, simultaneously turning on their lawn sprinklers. Alas, the surge in demand for water sapped the pressure required for the film's simulated rain. A second attempt was orchestrated with meticulous timing, ensuring a time when water demand would be low, allowing for the sequence to be captured in all its rainy glory. This meticulous attention to detail highlights the dedication and ingenuity of the filmmakers. However, it wasn't just the rain that demanded meticulousness. Gene Kelly, the film star and co-director, was nothing short of a taskmaster. In particular, his exacting standards were evident during Debbie Reynolds' rehearsals. Reynolds, a talented actress with little prior dance experience, faced an uphill climb. Kelly's relentless pursuit of perfection pushed her to the limit. Fred Astaire, the legendary dancer practicing nearby, discovered Reynolds in tears beneath a piano, overwhelmed by the physical demands and high expectations. His encouragement, a testament to the camaraderie among Hollywood's elite, gave her the strength to persist. Intriguingly, the film's plot centralizes on voice dubbing, notably Kathy Seldon's dubbing for Lena Lamont. Yet, a lesser-known twist exists within the musical numbers themselves. For the lilting would you, and a segment of You Are My Lucky Star, the vocals of Debbie Reynolds, the very actress portraying Kathy, were in fact dubbed by Betty Noyes. This ironic twist adds a layer of complexity, where the narrative's theme of authenticity intertwines with the practicalities of film production. Singin' in the Rain continues to resonate through the ages, and these lesser-known details unveil the meticulous artistry that fueled its creation. From battling unexpected water pressure challenges to nurturing a budding dancer's talent, the film's journey from script to screen is a tale of determination, creativity, and camaraderie that enriches its enduring legacy. 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 As we bid adieu to this cinematic journey through the rain-kissed streets of 1950s Hollywood, one can't help but marvel at the enduring magic of Singin' in the Rain. This timeless classic, born in an era when black and white films were transitioning to glorious technicolor, continues to shower us with its charm and effervescent joy. As you've danced and sang alongside Don, Kathy, and Cosmo, you've experienced the sheer delight of the silver screen at its finest. The film's seamless blend of music, dance, and comedy creates a symphony that resonates across generations. But beyond the glitz and glamour, it's a story that reminds us of the indomitable human spirit, of chasing dreams through adversity, and of the simple pleasure of dancing in the rain. Now, I invite you to take a moment and reflect. What is it about singing in the rain that has left an indelible mark on your heart? Was it the iconic umbrella twirling scene, the infectious tunes that linger in your mind? or perhaps the undeniable chemistry between its charismatic stars. Share your cherished memories, your favorite moments, or the personal connections you formed with this cinematic gem. Whether you first encountered this masterpiece in a cozy family gathering, during a rainy afternoon, or as part of your exploration into the world of classic cinema. Your thoughts and memories are like raindrops in the larger downpour of appreciation for this movie. Thank you for joining us on this delightful journey down memory lane celebrating a film that continues to make our hearts sing. Your reflections add another layer to the rich tapestry of singing in the rain and its enduring legacy. Keep dancing, keep singing, and keep those memories alive. Until our next cinematic rendezvous, stay inspired. And remember, this heartfelt message was... Is, is, is.